Passivation in physical chemistry and engineering refers to a material becoming passive, that is, less affected or corroded by the environment of future use. Passivation involves creation of an outer layer of shield material that is applied as a micro-coating, created by chemical reaction with the base material, or allowed to build from spontaneous oxidation in the air. As a technique, passivation is the use of a light coat of a protective material, such as metal oxide, to create a shell against corrosion. Passivation can occur only in certain conditions, and is used in microelectronics to enhance silicon. The technique of passivation strengthens and preserves the appearance of metallics. In electrochemical treatment of water, passivation reduces the effectiveness of the treatment by increasing the circuit resistance, and active measures are typically used to overcome this effect, the most common being polarity reversal, which results in limited rejection of the fouling layer. Other proprietary systems to avoid electrode passivation, several discussed below, are the subject of ongoing research and development. When exposed to air, many metals naturally form a hard, relatively inert surface, as in the tarnish of silver. Others, like iron, and Corrosion to a somewhat rough surface by removal a substantial amount of metal, which either dissolves in the environment or reacts with it to produce a loosely adherent, porous coating of corrosion products. Corrosion coating reduces the rate of corrosion by varying degrees, depending on the kind of base metal and its environment, and is notably slower in room temperature air for aluminium, chromium, zinc, titanium and silicon, the shell of corrosion inhibits deeper corrosion, and operates as one form passivation. The inert surface layer, termed the native oxide layer, is usually an oxide or a nitride, with a thickness of a monolayer for a noble metal such as platinum, about 15A for silicon, and nearer to 50A for aluminium after several years. Mechanisms there has been much interest in determining the mechanisms that govern the increase of thickness of the oxide layer over time. Some of the important factors are the volume of oxide relative to the volume of the parent metal, the mechanism of oxygen diffusion through the metal oxide to the parent metal, and the relative chemical potential of the oxide. Boundaries between micrograins, if the oxide layer is crystalline, form an important pathway for oxygen to reach the unoxidized metal below. For this reason, vitreous oxide coatings, which lack grain boundaries, can retard oxidation. The conditions necessary for passivation are recorded in Purbeck's diagrams. Some corrosion inhibitors help the formation of a passivation layer on the surface of the metals to which they are applied. Some compounds, dissolving in solutions form non-reactive and low-solubility films on metal surfaces. Discovery In the mid-1800s, Christian Friedrich Schobein discovered that when a piece of iron is placed in dilute nitric acid, it will dissolve and produce hydrogen. But if the iron is placed in concentrated nitric acid and then returned to the dilute nitric acid, little or no reaction will take place. Schaubein named the first state the active condition and the second the passive condition. If passive iron is touched by active iron, it becomes active again. Indiana 1920, Ralph South, Lilly measured the effect of an active piece of iron touching a passive iron wire and found that a wave of activation sweeps rapidly over its whole length. Specific materials, silicon in the area of microelectronics, the formation of a strongly adhering passivating oxide is important to the performance of silicon. In the area of photovoltaics, a passivating surface layer such as silicon nitride, 
Silicon dioxide at titanium dioxide can reduce surface recombination to a significant loss mechanism in solar cells. Aluminium Pure aluminium naturally forms a thin surface layer of aluminium oxide on contact with oxygen in the atmosphere through process called oxidation, which creates a physical barrier to corrosion of further oxidation in most environments. Aluminium alloys however, offer little protection against corrosion. There are three main ways to passivate these alloys. Alclading, chromate conversion coating and anodizing. Alclading is the process of metallurgically bonding a thin layer of pure aluminium to the aluminium alloy. Chromate conversion coating is a common way of passivating not only aluminum, but also zinc, cadmium, copper, silver, magnesium, and tin alloys. Anodizing forms a thick oxide coating. This finish is more robust than the other processes and also provides good electrical insulation, which the other two processes do not. For example, prior to storing hydrogen peroxide in an aluminium container, the container can be passivated by rinsing it with a dilute solution of nitric acid and peroxide alternating with deionized water. The nitric acid and peroxide oxidizes and dissolves any impurities on the inner surface of the container, and the deionized water rinses away the acid and oxidized impurities. Ferrous materials. Ferrous materials, including steel, may be somewhat protected by promoting oxidation and then converting the oxidation to a metallophosphate by using phosphoric acid and further, protected by surface coating. As the uncoated surface is water-soluble, a preferred method is to form manganese or zinc compounds by a process commonly known as parkerizing a phosphate conversion. Older, less effective but chemically similar electrochemical conversion coatings included black oxidizing, historically known as bluing or browning. Ordinary steel forms a passivating layer in alkali environments as reinforcing bars in concrete. Stainless steel. Stainless steels are corrosion resistant by nature, which might suggest that passivating them would be unnecessary. However, stainless steels are not completely impervious to rusting. One common mode of corrosion in corrosion resistant steels is when small spots on the surface begin to rust because grain boundaries are embedded. Bits of foreign matter allow water molecules to oxidize some of the iron in those spots despite the alloy in chromium. This is called rouging. Some grades of stainless steel are especially resistant to rouging. Parts made from them may therefore forego any passivation step, depending on engineering decisions. Passivation processes are generally controlled by industry standards, the most prevalent among them today being ASDM A967 and AMS 2700. These industry standards generally list several passivation processes that can be used, with the choice of specific method left to the customer and vendor. The method is either a nitric acid-based passivating bath or a citric acid-based bath. The various types listed under each method refer to differences in acid bath temperature and concentration. Sodium dichromate is often required as an additive to promote oxidation in certain types of nitric-based acid baths. Common among all of the different specifications and types of the following steps. Prior to passivation, the object in must be cleaned of any contaminants and generally must undergo a validating test to prove that the surface is clean. The object is then placed in an acidic passivating bath that meets the temperature and chemical requirements of the method and type specified between customer and vendor. Dot. 
The parts are neutralized using a bath of aqueous sodium hydroxide, then rinsed with clean water and dried. The pus of surface is validated using humidity, elevated temperature, a rusting agent, or some combination of the three. However, proprietary passivation processes exist for martensitic stainless steel, which is difficult to passivate, as microscopic discontinuities can form in the surface of a machined part during passivation in a typical nitric acid bath. The passivation process removes exogenous iron, creates, restores a passive oxide layer that prevents further oxidation, and cleans the parts of dirt, scale or other welding generated compounds. It is not uncommon for some aerospace manufacturers to have additional guidelines and regulations when passivating the products that exceed the national standard. Often, these requirements will be cascaded down using NADCAP or some other accreditation system. Various testing methods are available to determine the passivation of stainless steel. The most common methods for validating the passivity of a part is some combination of high humidity and heat for a period of time, intended to induce rusting. Electrochemical testers can also be utilized to commercially verify passivation. Nickel-nickel can be used for handling elemental fluorine, owing to the formation of a passivation layer of nickel fluoride. This fact is useful in water treatment and sewage treatment applications.